number one is you need the foundation of your diet to be whole plant foods. And that is critical. And so what do I mean by that? I mean you want 10 servings of vegetables and fruits. You want two or three servings of legumes. You want to make sure you've got uh, a, a serving of nuts and seeds or two, like at least one of nuts, one of seeds, and make sure there's an omega-3 rich source. You, if you're eating, grains are a little bit optional depending on your caloric needs, but you want them to be mainly intact. Uh, you want lots of herbs and spices because they're loaded with phytochemicals and antioxidants. So that's number one, whole plant foods. Uh, number two, you want to make sure that you're getting up in terms of the um, amount of fiber you're eating. So, so, and you do that just by eating that that number of whole plant foods. And the the number one source of fiber, of course, is beans. And so, including some legumes is a really, really good idea. The average person's eating 15 grams, 20 grams at most of fiber a day. We probably need more in the range of at least 35 to 50 for optimal health. Paleolithic people ate 70 to 150 grams of fiber a day. So that, that's number two. Number three is be very picky about your sources of carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates, you, you not only do you want to make sure you're not consuming refined carbohydrates. So when we say refined carbohydrates, and we're talking about both complex and simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates being uh, sugars, so soda pop and, and candy and white sugar and brown sugar and honey and all, all concentrated sweeteners. Uh, and and um, uh, refined, well, honey wouldn't be refined, but generally sugars that are concentrated, even agave syrup. And, and then on the complex carbohydrates, the refined complex carbohydrates are the white flour products, the white rice products, so the, the, the concentrated starches. And both of those uh, are consistently associated with increased disease risk, increased risk of overweight and obesity. You can't stop eating them. And uh, they're addictive. I, and, so, and, and, and so we just need to get rid of those foods as much as is possible. And, and then the next thing is a lot of people will say, well, um, you know, whole grains are fine. So I eat all whole wheat bread and I eat, you know, puffed rice and I eat my flaked organic camu flakes or whatever. And people also need to understand that there's a hierarchy within the whole grain world. And I, I created this sort of hierarchy of whole grains to help people understand that just because it's a whole grain doesn't mean it's not highly processed, okay? So you can take and make whole grain flour, but then you're making um, you know, the muffins or cupcakes or whatever with the whole grain flour. You've still added a bunch of fat and sugar and salt. And you know, what, we, you know, what we, we do when we make foods out of flour is add things to make it taste good. And so in the whole grain hierarchy, at the top of the hierarchy is intact whole grains. Then would be, next would be cut whole grains like steel cut oats. Then next on the hierarchy would be rolled whole grains like rolled oats. Then next would be the um, uh, 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 shredded whole grains. Then ground, then flaked, then puffed at the bottom. And when you, the puffing process is, you know, you put a grain under, you know, so much pressure that you puff it. Well, as you go down the hierarchy, you digest and absorb these things faster. You increase the surface area, so it increases your blood glucose more. You decrease the nutritional value because you're exposing the food to air and just, just all of these processing techniques. And so we want to, as much as possible, stay higher on that on that whole grain hierarchy. So that's number three, is the carbo choosing carbohydrates. Number four is uh, with protein. Um, it, stick to plant protein as much as is possible. And, and again, you want to be sticking mainly to beans, lentils, peas, these intact sort of um, uh, legumes that have all the fiber and phytochemicals and all of that and choosing less often the more highly processed options. Now, there's a lot of controversy about soy. So I'll, I'll just say I haven't said anything about soy. I'll say a few words about soy. To me, the acid test is to look at the healthiest, longest-lived populations on the planet. 
two populations, the Okinawans and the Seventh-day Adventists, that are blue zone populations, include soy as a dietary staple. The Okinawans consuming two servings a day and the Adventists consuming, I'm not sure, they haven't quantified it, but soy is a part of their regular daily diet. And so if it is a staple in the longest lived peoples, it's probably not poison. <laughs> so, but what people need to understand is that we want to be choosing, I would choose organic and I would choose soy that's less processed. So edamame, um, uh, soybeans, uh, and, and tofu or tempeh is not super highly processed, rather than the this, this sort of veggie meats, which are more highly processed, which I'm not saying you can never include, but should be less often. And so, you know, plant-based protein foods uh, have huge advantages over animal-based protein foods. And I won't get into that too much, but just know, and I think you've heard it probably from Dr. Furman quite a lot, there's so many um, problems with meat uh, in comparison to legumes. I have a kind of a list where I have them side by side, and there are so many uh, advantages to legume. And if we look at mortality, the studies on mortality show that even the tiniest uh, bit of legume consumption, two-thirds of an ounce a day, decreases mortality by seven to eight percent. Whereas with meat, it's the exact opposite. Meat increases mortality consistent across the board. Uh, so, so that's uh, number four, protein. Number five, uh, we'd be talking about fat. And again, get your fat from whole foods. Uh, and, and, you know, rather than I look at oils, uh, to me, oils are to the fat world as sugars are to the carbohydrate world. You know, with carbohydrates, when people get their carbohydrates from whole foods, uh, they're at no increased risk of disease. They're at a decreased risk of disease. And it's the same with fats. I think that with fats, we want to get them mainly from whole foods, nuts, seeds, avocados, and these kinds of, of higher fat foods, rather than from oils, which are highly refined foods. And, uh, and so that, and making sure we have that source of omega-3. We need two to four grams a day. We would get that from eating a tablespoon of flax seeds. We would get that, a uh, ground flax seeds, because you're not going to absorb it from intact flax seeds. A couple of tablespoons of hemp seeds, a tablespoon and a half of chia seeds, um, you know, an ounce of walnuts would provide that. So that's, you know, and with fats, you want to, you know, absolutely eliminate trans fats. You want to minimize saturated fats. So maybe five, six percent of calories is what the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology suggest. The only people that are in that realm are vegans. So that's bottom line. It's not hard to be in that range on a vegan diet. Uh, and we want to avoid damaged fats. So fats that are heated to high temperatures and also even storing nuts and seeds. We want to store nuts and seeds in the fridge or refrigerator. So what I do when I buy nuts or seeds is so I, I get, you know, my uh, five kilos or 10 pounds of, of uh, walnuts or pumpkin seeds or whatever. I always buy them in volume. The first thing I do is soak, soak them for, you know, um, overnight or for a few hours, whatever it is dehydrate them in the dehydrator, and then I put them in little containers and freeze them. And I take them out as I need them, and that's, that's how I deal with nuts and seeds. And so I think that was number five. Number six would be to, um, to minimize exposure to environmental uh, uh, contaminants. So we're wanting to uh, minimize our exposure to persistent organic pollutants, like dioxins and uh, all of these pollutants that, that, you know, move up the food chain uh, and, and mercury and, and the heavy metals and, and uh, you know, all of these agrochemicals, pesticides and herbicides and, and, and uh, growth, you know, um, uh, growth regulators and all of these things. So how do we do that? Well, two ways. Eat lower on the food chain and eat organic. So it's really as simple as that. Uh, next on the list would be to um, really reduce our, our, um, uh, the toxic compounds that are formed from cooking. 
And so we're talking about heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and advanced glycation end products and, and acrylamide and all of these compounds which are potentially uh, neurotoxic, carcinogenic, uh, you know, and so we just need to be aware of those. And so how, what, how do we deal with that? Don't eat fried foods, just don't eat them. Uh, don't, you know, don't fry with oil. Um, keep, if, if possible, keep oils out of cooking as much as possible, uh, you know, just not using them. Uh, and, and then um, uh, storing foods properly. So the, the nuts and seeds in the fridge and freezer and so forth. Uh, and I think that was number seven or eight. Where will that we see around there? Anyway, uh, and then the next on the list to me would be to maximize phytochemicals and antioxidants. And that means just eating the widest variety and the most colorful foods you can within each category. So in fruits and vegetables, I, I always say at least three green, two red, or, uh, two, red uh, two purple, blue, uh, two orange, yellow, uh, you know, and a few, even the white beige family with the onions and garlic and so forth. And so you want the whole range of the rainbow, but you want the variety and not just in fruits and vegetables. Think about it when you're choosing beans, more of the red and black beans, more of the, even in grains, you know, black rice or red rice or red or black quinoa instead of always choosing the brown, for example. And, uh, and so, and, and just the variety as well. So you don't want to be eating six apples a day as your, as your fruits. You want to be including some berries and some citrus fruits and, and, and it's the same in, in all categories. You want to be varying up your, your choices. And then, um, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm missing any, but the last one that I would say would be, uh, just don't overeat. Do not overeat. I, the Japanese with the hairy hachibu thing, eat till you're 80% full, is a really good plan. It's so hard to do in such an obesogenic environment where we have such, you know, foods that we can't resist all around us and people are offering and that's how we show love and it's how we commune with our families and it's so difficult. It's so difficult. And so we just need to be really conscious of, of um, you know, not just the type of food we eat, but the quantity of food. So if we're eating a large volume, it's, we want to eat a large volume of salad, not a large volume of, of garbage food. Uh, and and uh, just, you know, and, uh, um, not, uh, the, the other thing that to me is really important is not drinking uh, sugar. <laughs> That's one of the best things you can do for weight control because people who are leaner have a, have a much lower risk of any chronic disease and a, a greater longevity. So that's very, very important. So those are kind of the, the, I would say the top 10. If I did 10, I'm not sure if I did nine or 10, but anyway, the, the, the top. And, and then I'll leave you with my, you know, sort of final thought. And that is um, that, you know, we, um, we have such power in our personal example. Uh, it's, it's incredible. People, you know, nobody, um, I think, we, we don't get through to anybody by spitting in their face. Um, we, we need, in order to move people, we need to connect with them and love them and cherish the wonderful things that they're doing and then sh share our example of good health, but also share delicious, wonderful food with a, a really generous heart. And, uh, and I think that's the, the most important thing we can do to help other people shift. It, rather than um, you know, waving a finger at them or telling them they're, they're idiots or any of that, uh, it, it doesn't bring us together. We, we need to be connecting with people with respect and, um, and with love. And that means sharing, um, it means sharing food and it means um, just being generous. So that's what veganism is all about. It's about compassion. It's about wanting to make this world um, a more beautiful place, more ethical place. And, and it begins with how we treat our neighbors. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much.